Hi there, Frank Flake here, founder of Ethical Property Partners, and today I'm bringing you a strategy that I absolutely love. This strategy can make you so much money in big chunks relatively quickly, and in property, that's like the unicorn that you're after, a big chunk of money very quickly. Most investors, they put 25%, 30%, 35% of a property's purchase price into the property, and then they maybe get a return of five or 10% on that. It takes them years and years and years to recoup their money, and then they can buy again, sometimes 10 or 15 years. If you can do this particular strategy, you can actually get big chunks of money in a matter of months, certainly in a year or two, that can enable you to, to buy more properties, not just one more, but multiple more properties from this one strategy. That's what I'm gonna be covering today in this episode. The strategy is called buy one, get one free. You're all familiar with that concept from our supermarkets. You wanna buy a bottle of shampoo and it's three pounds and they give you a second bottle of shampoo for free. You don't want two bottles of shampoo, but if you buy one, you get one for free. And so you go for that shampoo, which is slightly more than the one you were gonna buy at £2.50, because if you buy that, you're gonna to have to buy another one in a few weeks time, whereas this one you pay a bit more, but you get the second bottle for free. Well, buy one, get one free in property is the same, except you don't pay a little bit more. You actually pay what you're gonna pay all along, but you get the buy one, get one free thrown in. You get the free one thrown in on top. There are six steps to the process, and I'm gonna talk you through all six steps right now. Step number one is you want to identify the get one free part of the transaction very early on, right from the outset. So when you're meeting with the vendor, when you're walking around the property, you want to be identifying what it is you want thrown in for free. And it could be, let me give you some examples. In fact, I'm gonna give you a live example, one that we've actually bought for free and monetized and sold on in just a moment. But this could be a plot of land on the side of a house. So sometimes it's a corner plot and there's a nice plot of land and you might think to yourself, that's a nice building plot. I'll take that for free. It could be behind a property. There could be a large piece of land, perhaps a field attached to a property. And you think, oh, I'll have that for free. It could be a piece of land separate to a property. It could even be a separate property, but not very often. Most often it's a piece of land that has potential. And this is step number one, potential to massively increase its value, but the vendor perceives it as low value. So you certainly don't want to be saying to the vendor, oh, this is very valuable. I wonder if we could get planning permission on this, or I bet we could build another dwelling on this plot. You don't want to be saying anything like this. I met with a vendor um, to a commercial property in Derbyshire and I sat down with them and I, because it was a commercial property, it had a massive car park in front of it, not actually adjoining it, it was across a busy road, but they had another commercial property the other side and the two shops shared this big car park. The car park was easily big enough for 50, maybe even 70 cars, big car park. And so I straight away identified that's got great planning permission potential for, for building on, but obviously they needed the car park for their second shop. So as I was going through the property, as I was meeting with the vendors and hearing why they needed to sell, etc., I highlighted to them that I would be happy to buy the property if they could give me a slice of the car park. So their perception of the car park was that it was quite low value. I explained that I needed some parking for my property so that I could get planning permission to convert it. It was commercial, I wanted to convert it into residential. I explained that I might need some parking in order to turn it into flats and they were okay with that. They understood that that was the case. And they said, how much of the car park? And I said, well, if you could give me a third of the car park, that would work for me. And so they did. And let me tell you what I did to that uh, car park in a few minutes. So the first is it has to have low perceived value in the vendor's eyes, because otherwise they're not gonna give it to you for free. Now that property that I bought in Derbyshire, I actually bought it at 25% below asking price, below its market value. So I got 25% knocked off, and then I got the car park for free as well. It's a 265, 264,000 pound property, and I bought it for 198,000 pounds. So it's just over 25% off. 
First thing is it has to have low perceived value. Secondly, it actually has to have massive potential. It has to have massive actual value to us because otherwise it doesn't work. If you get a piece of wasteland that has no potential, that's landlocked, you know, the size of a tennis court is landlocked, you can't do anything with it, that's probably worth, I don't know, 5,000 pounds as an extra bit of garden. They're gonna perceive it as an extra bit of garden, but actually it's only worth a bit of garden. So that's not how it works. It has to have low perceived value to them, step one. Step two, actually high actual value to us, the piece of car park. They thought it was car parking for 20 cars. I actually got planning for six flats on that, and that made a massive difference to its value. So low perceived value, high actual value. Third, you don't want to give the game away. You don't want to tell the vendors that this is really important to you. I'll only do it if you throw this in. It needs to be almost a throwaway, as in, I can buy this from you, I can do this deal, but I'm gonna need you to add this in. I'm gonna need you to add in that strip of land, or I'm gonna need you to give me access rights along your driveway. So it could be that there's a driveway to their house and they've got a small, garden here or a dwelling here and you need access because you've identified if you've got access along this driveway you could actually develop it later something like that you know yeah I, I might need to drive in there though so so long as you give me access over that or happy to buy this but I need this on the side or I need just a bit of your garden over here so get it thrown in as an extra that's your third step the fourth step is something people miss all the time pay cash for it so what you don't want to do, let's say you've got a house and you've got a big garden on the side, don't buy the whole lot on one title. Even if it's on one title now, don't buy it all on one title using a mortgage. And you might ask, why is that, Frank? Why can't I just buy it all on one title? It's because it limits what you can do with it afterwards. If you've bought it all on one title and then you get planning permission to build a separate dwelling on, on this parcel of land on the side, how are you gonna build that dwelling? How are you gonna finance it? You can't get development finance because the whole parcel of land, the whole title, has already got a first charge on it. So you need to be playing chess, and we've I've recorded videos on how you need to be thinking ahead, we call it pothole avoidance, so spotting the potholes in the road before you get to them. We talk about playing chess with property thinking several moves ahead. So if you know that you're gonna apply for planning, you're hoping to get planning, don't then tie yourself in knots with a first charge over the whole thing. So what you need to say is okay, or let me give you the example of the commercial property in Derbyshire with the, with the car park. I said, we'll happily pay you 198,000 for the, the property, no problem at all. Thank you for adding in the car park. What we'll do is we'll buy the property for 197,000 and we'll pay a thousand pounds for the car park and we'll just do it on two separate titles. They couldn't care less, they're getting 198,000 pounds. But for us, now the car park is unencumbered. There's no lending on it. We can do whatever we like with it. So after you get your planning permission, you can then get development finance on that. If you want to build it out yourself, you can sell it on if you want to, and you keep the main property with the mortgage on it, and, and you're not having to take that charge off and refinance it. The number of people that do that. If you've got a big a, a first charge over the whole thing, and then you get planning permission on this bit here, you have to pay off the whole mortgage and replace it with a new mortgage on just this bit and development finance on this bit or then you can sell this bit off. It's just additional cost, additional uncertainty and it will slow you down massively. So the fourth tip is pay cash for the free bit. Now you might be thinking, Frank, it's not free if you're paying cash for it. It is free, you just pay a little bit of cash and you could do it on a pound or a hundred pounds. I always do a grand because it makes sense to the lawyers, etc. but it, it, there's no legal reason it has to be a thousand pounds. But what you want to do is buy the property using whatever finance. So if you're using bridging, if you're using private finance, if you're using a conventional mortgage, they're gonna come out and value that and you're gonna buy that and then the separate title, and even if it's on one title now, as you buy it, the conveyancers can split the title for you. So they can split it into two titles, you get your, your finance on this bit, the dwelling with the garden, for example, and on this bit, you just pay a bit of cash and you have that unencumbered. So that's the fourth thing you need to do.
The fifth step to buy one, get one free as a strategy is adding massive value. Doesn't mean you have to do lots of work, but it means you have to add lots of value. So my car park was brown field. It wasn't even tarmac. It was just a piece of ground, dirt, it had weeds growing in on it and stuff. And so I went and got planning permission. It cost me less than £5,000 to get planning permission and to buy the piece of land because there was a, a bit of legals uh, associated. So we then got outline planning permission for six flats, um, two storey buildings, six flats with parking on this third of a car park. Very important. Because I was playing chess, because I was thinking steps ahead, I made sure I had two vehicular access points to the car park. Now, why did I do that? Well, I've already mentioned it was a busy road, and what I didn't want was highways having an objection to six new dwellings, potentially six, 12 vehicles, coming in and off quite a busy main road. As it happens, they didn't have a problem, but if they had had a problem, I could have designed the flats layout differently and used the alternative exit. So I had two entrances onto my uh, plot, which doesn't mean you have to use both. In fact, it's possibly wasteful to use both, but it meant that if they didn't like this one, I could use this one, or if they didn't like this one, I could use this one. So it was doubling the chance of actually getting planning permission. So that's the really important part. And even if they said you have to use both, perhaps I would have only ended up with four flats, that would have been fine as well. You have to add massive value. I applied for the six flats, I got planning permission for the six flats. It took less than three months. I was un unbelievably easy to get planning permission for these six flats. And then what do you do last? So that's step five. Step six, the final step, is you need to monetize it. So now I've got a piece of land. I've got the building, 197,000. I actually used 100% finance investments. So I used 100% of two investors funds. So two private individuals lent me £197,000 to buy the property. Now this might boggle your mind, but I actually got 132% loan to value on that loan. Now you might be thinking, hang on a second, you can't get above 100%. When you're dealing with private individuals, you absolutely can. So we borrowed more than the property was worth because then we did a lot of work to the property. So we actually split it, it as a big commercial building. We split it into two residential um, properties and are now letting those out as a stepping stones project property actually. So we now have two six bed HMOs in, in that commercial property, having split it and used the money that we got above the purchase price to do the development. So completely no money down deal on the building, but we put a thousand pounds of our own cash into the car park. We got planning permission on it, spent another few grand on that. So I think it cost us about five grand in total to get planning permission for six flats on that piece of land. And then you need to monetize that. So you either need to start renting it out. So you can't rent a car park out for very much. You get a few quid a month, but not a lot. Um, if it's a separate property or whatever, then you might be able to monetize it. But normally with buy one, get one free, you're going to be selling on afterwards. We put that piece of land into an auction. Now I've talked about selling in auctions and you wanna go have a look at that video because we used our how to sell at an auction strategy on this. Most of the auctioneers, we got three auctioneers around to value it. They were valuing it between like 40 and 60,000 pounds, I, I forget the exact figures, we actually achieved 99,000 pounds for this piece of land. And if you wanna find out how we sold it for basically 50% more than it was worth, well, between 50 and 100% more than it was worth, um, go have a look at that video. It will explain how to do this, how to sell at auctions for massively more than the auctioneer says they can get for it. And auctioneers are typically quite optimistic because they want you to list with them, etc. But what we did is we achieved 99,000 pounds for that piece of land that cost us a thousand pounds to buy and about 4,000 pounds to get planning on. So we netted our net profit on that was 94,000 pounds. Unbelievable profit from a get one free. Just a off the cuff question. We need you to, to throw that car park in, that slice of, the, slice of the car park in order for us to buy the property. Yeah, no problem, you can have that. 
£94,000 profit. The property itself only cost us 198 pounds so now we've paid off nearly half our mortgage if we wanted to, we could pay off nearly half the mortgage, and that property itself was worth 260 265 So now all of a sudden we've got a £260,000 property, quarter of a million pound property, but we only owe just over 100 grand on it if we'd chosen to do that. Now, knowing me, you know that we haven't paid down the, the loan. We've gone and used that 94 grand to go do other deals because cash is king and 94 grand, we could do many deals with that. But that was only possible because we were thinking clearly from the start about how to operate a buy one, get one free. So whenever you're sitting down with a vendor, be aware of what else they have. Have they got a row of garages around the corner? throw those in or give them a few grand for those because perhaps you can turn them into Muse apartments. Perhaps you can let them as garages. Perhaps you can knock them down and get planning for a nice row of town townhouses. You don't have to be a developer, guys, to do this. I didn't build the six flats. I just got planning permission for six flats and then sold them to a builder that wanted to build them. And I've probably made more profit than he will on that just by asking the question, just from being a little bit aware of what is possible, just from being focused on what is actually possible. So do not forget, next time you sit down with a vendor, next time you're negotiating, just think to yourself, buy one, get one free. How could that apply in this situation? And when they come along, they don't come along every day, you know, they're quite niche, but if you've got enough strategies, we've got 61 strategies on EPP, and this is just one of them, buy one, get one free. If you've got all those strategies in your brain, when you're sitting in front of the vendor, you'd be amazed at how often one, two, three, four of those will crop up, and you'll think, hey, we can do that, and we can do that, and we can, wow, now we're rocking and rolling. There's a, a, a video that I've made, a YouTube episode that I've made on the cake and layers of icing on the cake, and that's when you start making really good money in your SPI business, guys, your sophisticated property investment business. Once you start baking a cake, which is the deal, and adding layers of, of icing, so this strategy, this strategy, this strategy, the deals get sweeter and sweeter, they get better and better for you. And you, after just a few months, like me, can be walking away from transactions with £94,000 in your pocket. If you want to hear more of our episodes, hit the notification bell, guys. We'll let you know every time there's an episode. There's one at least two times a week, sometimes three times in a week. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, you'll see all of my episodes as and when they come up. In the meantime, happy investing. <laughs>